Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take this old Dell, reapply some thermal paste, fix the RAM, and add a hard drive. Alright, it's time to crack open this old Dell. We're going to remove the SATA cables, and then we're going to go ahead and remove the CD drive. Yeah, I know, nobody uses a CD drive. This tells you how old it is. And once we got that removed, we're going to remove the hard drive cage. As you can see, the stick of RAM wasn't even pushed down. It was just sitting there. So we'll go ahead and shove that back in the correct way. Unfortunately, this old dinosaur only had one stick of RAM. We'll grab a screwdriver so we can get the heat sink off. As you can see, it's a little old, so they're a little harder to get off. All right, now let's unplug the heatsink fan. Try to get some of the cables out of the way. This particular one had a little hook on the heatsink that was holding the USB cables. Obviously, I didn't loosen up the screws all the way. And now we're going to pull off the heat sink. And there is the thermal paste that is on there. It looks a little dry, a little old. Good time to go ahead and replace it with some new stuff. So here's the heat sink. You can see how dusty it is. It's not the worst I've seen for sure, but it is still loaded with dust. And uh, here's how I usually clean them with a toothbrush. Just an old one, you know, you don't need to go buy a brand new one. Just replace the one you have. So clean it all out, it gets there and the grooves right nice. And now you can see that we have the old thermal paste on the heat sink. It's just crusty, it's rolling off, it's chunky, it's no good. So now we're going to clean the CPU. I used a tissue paper. You can use paper towel, maybe a nice uh, cotton cloth. Just go ahead and wipe it all off. Make sure you get as much as you can. Make it nice and shiny. And we're going to do the same with the actual heat sink itself. So we're going to just rub off all that old crusty dry thermal paste. Make sure you get as much off as you can to give it a good rub. Now I'm going to take out the CPU just to show you how it comes out and how to put it back in. So all Intel boards have this little lever. Just go ahead and push that down then pull it out to the right. And that will pop up the little latch. Grab the CPU by the edges. Don't touch the pins or anything in the socket. Don't touch the actual bottom of the CPU. And we're running a Core i3 in this one. And if you look here, the little golden triangle, we're going to line that up with the triangle in the socket, just at the tip of my fat finger there. Just place it in gently, give it a little wiggle, you'll feel it drop right in. We can go ahead and close the bracket, close the latch, just pull it out slightly to the right and slide it under. For thermal paste, we're using MX4. Uh, it's Arctic Silver. Really good stuff. So I'll do a quick unboxing here. You get the little spreader that comes with it. Um, it's kind of pointless. I don't really use it. Never have, never will. And we have the actual thermal paste itself. 
So for thermal paste size, we really just want to put a little dab size of a grain of rice. That looks great. So we're going to go ahead and put the heat sink back on. Uh, just line it up. In this particular one, it has tabs. It lines up with the cage in the front. So it took a little bit of wiggling to get it in. And once you get the heat sink in, it's time to screw it down. So we're going to screw it down in a star pattern. So as you can see here, it'll evenly distribute the pressure. Make sure they're uh, good and tight. Go around in the star pattern again just to make sure they're all down properly. The screws will stop and it'll be a hard stop when it reaches their limit. Then plug in the CPU fan again. Now we have the hard drive case. In Dell's there's two little tabs that you just need to squish together to pull out the mounting mechanism for the cage. And you'll see four pins that line up with the screw holes on the actual drive. Just uh, line those up and then it should slip right in. And once we have that lined up, we're going to grab the cage and slide the hard drive holder into the cage. And it'll just click right in. And then we're going to reassemble the cage into the case again. You can put your SATA cables and power cables on there first. Doesn't really matter because it's still accessible at this point. Now we can plug in our SATA cables. Just make sure you line up the uh, tab on the SATA cable the correct way. And tuck away all the wires so nothing's in the way. And that's it. We're going to throw on the case cover. If you want to see more of this content, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that share button, and leave a comment below.